G'day YouTube, 1MJ here. Well, quiet weekend so far uh, in the kind of crypto scheme, really not a whole lot happening, but a couple of things happening that are pretty interesting. So this is one that I found. So it's on the Forbes website here. 20 institutional Bitcoin investors revealed, but soon the list may vanish. So basically what this uh, uh, article goes on to say is that currently uh, a number of uh, people have got involved uh, in Bitcoin, institutional investors. So places like uh, ARK Investment, uh, Horizon Connecticut, uh, what is it, the Rothschild Investment Corporation, Addison Capital and things like that. So they've all started to get uh, into Bitcoin. Uh, well, not just Bitcoin, but cryptocurrencies. And basically they have to fill out a form uh, when they're getting involved. Uh, to basically make it known that they are investing and a, a lot of them have done it through uh, Grayscale So they've uh, gotten in on the Grayscale uh, Investment firm uh, their Bitcoin trust and basically what has happened is uh, you originally only had to Kind of declare and make it uh, public uh, If you're only putting in uh, I think it was like a hundred million or something like that so if you invested more than 100 million into Bitcoin, you had to declare and it had to be publicly known. But now uh, the SEC is looking at changing it to $3.5 billion. So if you're investing in uh, cryptocurrencies and things like that, and again, a lot of these big uh, institutional firms and that, they're only putting in one or 2%, and it comes to less than 3.5 billion. So at the moment, uh, it's public knowledge uh, who's investing uh, in grayscale and Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and things like that. But if the SEC gets it to 3.5 billion, then it won't be uh, publicly known unless you invest over 3.5 billion. And the article goes on to say that there's only about nine companies currently that have filled out these uh, 13FS forms uh, that would have to basically now be uh, public knowledge that they've invested in Bitcoin because they would be under the 3.5 billion. So at the moment, you know, you can see that there's all these places and how much they've invested in Bitcoin. Because, you know, as, if it's over 100 million, then you have to, uh, you know, sort of publicly declare it, I guess. It's on public record, but it's moving to 3.5 billion. And really, it would just be the real big ones, grayscale and things like that. So interesting that, you know, there is uh, already moves uh, to kind of hide who's investing in Bitcoin. Uh, my gut feeling is... You know, the big institutional money outside of, you know, Grayscale, who it's just well known, but, you know, places like ARK Investment and the Rothschild, uh, what, what's it called? Uh, the Rothschild, oh, I've lost it. Uh, it'll be in here somewhere. Anyway, anyway all these big companies, basically, uh, they don't want everyone knowing uh, what they're investing in. They, <laughs> they want to keep it on the down low. Uh, Rothschild Investment Corp, that's it. So you can see... Uh, the amount that they've put in there. And, and Rothschild's a massive company. And I guess on a privacy level, I can sort of understand that, but they are publicly traded uh, companies and things like that. So I, I think, you know, as soon as you're publicly traded, I, I think it should be uh, sort of for all to see. Not everything, obviously, but people should be able to see what you're getting invested in. Uh, maybe not down to, you know, small amounts of money, but definitely when you're making big investments, but again, uh, it's that old saying, you know, don't listen to what they're saying, follow what they're doing. Well, here's all the information you need. Big institutional money is getting into crypto, but soon, unless they're over the 3.5 billion, you'll never know that they're in it. And you can bet a number of them will be trying to stay under the 3.5 billion for a while anyway. Obviously, if uh, Bitcoin starts to just absolutely you know, goes to 100,000, you know, 300,000, 400,000 or whatever, it's going to be pretty hard for them to stay under that 3.5 billion. But by that time, they won't really care because they'll have built up such a position that, you know, they won't have to worry and they won't care that everyone else is uh, knowing that they're invested in Bitcoin and all the rest of it uh, because they'll have got in before. So what I take from that uh, is if you're in Bitcoin now, you're doing it at the same time as institutional money. And they basically call this smart money. And look, a lot of the time it is smart money. But there's even smarter money, and that's people who got in before. So again, don't worry about what they're saying, because they're all, you know, previously anyway, they're all telling us how bad Bitcoin was and cryptocurrencies, it's all going to zero, blah, blah, blah. And now have a look at all these companies. Tons of them. 
and investing millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. And, you know, again, Grayscale, that they got, I think, $5 billion or something now uh, invested into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So anyone who's still trying to tell you cryptocurrencies are bullshit and they're going to zero and all the rest of it, don't listen to them. They're, they're talking rubbish. All right, another one I found interesting. So over here on the daily huddle, so a lot of people have been worried about quantum computing and things like that, and they're worried that you know uh, quantum computers are basically going to be able to you know break the code and they're going to be able to find out people's public keys and that. So I'll read a little bit of this article. A new computing breakthrough may have just saved Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies from powerful quantum machines that have the potential to breach public key cryptography. Researchers, researchers are following the development of a new measure known as lattice-based cryptography that promises to make crypto technology more quantum-proof, reports MIT Technological Review. Lattice-based crypto, uh, crypt cryptography may neutralize the massive computational capacities of quantum computers by hiding data inside complex geometric structures that contain a grid of infinite dots that are spread across thousands of dimensions. The security measure appears to be virtually impenetrable, even with the most, even with the use of uh, powerful quantum computers, unless one holds the key. The emergence of quantum computing machines has grabbed headlines over the past few months, as the technology poses a threat to cryptographic uh, algorithms that keep cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, as well as the internet at large, secure. The World Economic Forum explains how quantum computers can break current standards of encryption. The sheer calculating ability of a sufficiently powerful and error-corrected quantum computer means that public key cryptography is destined to fail and would put the technology used to protect many of today's fundamental digital systems and activities at risk. MIT, te MIT Technology Review says that while the current iterations are not yet ready for implementation, the solution is promising, especially as a post-quantum uh, future is fast approaching. Ripple CTO David Schwartz says he, be he believes developers are at least eight years away from the technology, which leverages the properties of quantum physics to perform fast calculations uh, and become sophisticated enough to, crap to crack cryptography. And so this is a quote from him. I think we have at least eight years. I have very high confidence that it's at least a decade before quantum computing reaches uh, presents a threat, but you never know when there could be a breakthrough. I'm cautious I am a cautious and concerned observer, I would say. So that's uh, CTO David Schwartz. So again, you know, a, a lot of people are worried about quantum computing and that, that, you know, it can break the code and all the rest of it and then get your public keys. Sounds like, you know, well, you know, people are worried about it uh, and, you know, people are actively working on quantum, uh, quantum uh, computers and things like that. People are also actively working at ways to kind of prevent them from cracking codes and things like that. So good to know people are working on that. Now, we go over, have a look at the cryptocurrency market. So not a lot happening with Bitcoin. We're still just, you know, we range between about 11,200 and 11,800 up and down here and there. But wow, chain link, 20 basically percent in 24 hours. What a move. Now, I'm a chain link holder and there's lots of FUD out there, uh, specifically from that, you know, fake Zeus capital, oh, excuse me, uh, fake Zeus capital stuff that's going around. Uh, you know, basically everyone needs to use uh, chain link uh, is what it appears. Look, I'm, I'm no expert. I can only go based on the, you know, the, the knowledge that I have. And I'd say, you know, a, a lot of companies that are going to get involved in cryptocurrencies, they're probably going to use Chainlink as an Oracle service. Now, Band Protocol has been on quite a run as well and is doing really, really well. Uh, and Band Protocol basically costs the same amount as Chainlink at the moment, but it has very few partnerships. I'm not saying it doesn't have any, and I'm not trying to FUD on Band Protocol, but I find it interesting that Band Protocol costs nearly as much as Chainlink. Now, I could be wrong. Let's go down and have a look. I can't remember where Band Protocol is, but I could have swore it was up there around the $12 as well. Well, there you go. Not far. $11.62. Uh, you know, do they have the adoption and all the rest of it? I'm not sure. I don't know enough about Band Protocol, but it seems like they're definitely moving up the ranks fast. Uh, and as long as they've got adoption, then, you know, congratulations to everyone who's holding ban. But if there's very little adoption, then this is all just uh, speculation at the moment. And again, not, not fudding on ban protocol. Uh, I just don't know enough about them. And I know Chainlink has, 
you know, so many partnerships, it's not funny. But well done, well done to Chainlink, and you know, I'm holding Chainlink, so I'm, I'm not complaining. Lastly, I just want to go have a look at the charts. So as we can see, Bitcoin, it's just sort of ranging. Now the lows are sort of getting higher. We had one lower low down here, but then they basically sort of moving upwards. So we'll have to wait and see. Now look, at the moment, this is my opinion, not financial advice. <laughs> and I know this is sitting on the fence. There's a 50% chance uh, we go to the upside and a 50% chance we go to the downside. <laughs> and I know you're probably like, oh, thanks very much, 1MJ. I thought you were going to give us, you know, some real good knowledge. But look, to be honest, at the moment, I just can't tell. You know, we have had such a big pump here, but then we had such a big sell-off here. Yeah. You know, we could trade sideways for a little bit longer and you go down here and you have a look and the volume's really fallen off, but it is the weekend. So we'll have to wait and see what happens Monday uh, on what happens here. But, you know, we have, you know, we are sort of coiling and getting tighter here. So I'd say a big move is, well, maybe not a massive move, but a move is likely uh, sort of come Monday or Tuesday, I would say. But again, it wouldn't surprise me if we rolled over and came back to retest uh, this $10,500 level. But that's not to say that's what I think it's going to do. It just wouldn't surprise me. I honestly don't know what it's going to do at the moment. Uh, you know, it, sometimes there's things that are obvious in the markets. Uh, again, you know, institutional money is getting in. So chances are, you, you know, that it will go up. But that doesn't mean to say we can't have some pretty, you know, fierce corrections. And Bitcoin's done it before. I mean, it did it here the other day. You know, we had this pump up and everyone got really excited. Well, we've had a bit of a pump up here, so the excitement could be brewing. And again, we're just really struggling to break this kind of $11,800. And you can see we're already falling down to 11600 here. So, you know, whether we continue to sell off or finally break that $11,800 level, who knows? But we zoom out a little bit. So kind of the twelve and a half thousand dollar mark, you know, we need to break that. Then we have to break that kind of, you know, fourteen ish thousand dollar mark, and then after there, you know, we, we should. Uh, the only real resistance we have after that, you know, is that kind of seventeen thousand dollar level. After that, other than the abs the peak, but that was just kind of resistance rather than it was support. So, yeah, interesting times. <sighs> And I'm sorry I can't offer you any more insight on what I think Bitcoin's going to do. You know, I, I'm guessing we're just going to try trade sideways for a little while at the very least. Uh, and, you know, the volume's fallen off. And again, it's the weekend, so that's what tends to happen. Uh, come Monday morning, you know, everyone could be flooding in and buying it up or people could be selling it off and taking some profits. We'll just have to wait and see. But what we can do over here is, again, Bitcoin hasn't moved too much. Decentraland, oh God, I'm kicking myself. I was going to buy some a while ago. It has had such a run. You know, if you're holding Decentraland, it's basically doubled its price in the last couple of days. You know, Balancer uh, on a run, Swipe on a run. You know, there we go. Band Protocol, Chainlink, Algorand. I've got some Algorand, so I'm stoked with that. I've got some Cosmos, stoked. Got some VeChain, stoked. Got some Blockstack, stoked. Got some Loopring, stoked. Got Kyber Network, and that's good. It's kind of been ranging sideways for a little while, so it's good to see that it's you know made some gains. Carver's been doing quite well, so I've got both of those. Uh, Matic Network, I've got Matic Network. Matic Network, sorry. Uh, and I think I'm almost scraping even. So I lost some money originally when I got into Matic Network. Matic Network, God, I'm struggling with that today. Uh, and 0x as well. I think I'm finally in profit on 0x. So it's not like there's no profits to be made. And I'll put out a tweet a couple of days ago. When Bitcoin trades sideways, that's when the alts will absolutely pump. And as soon as Bitcoin starts to make a move, just watch all the alts and not all the alts and not all the profit, but the alts will start to bleed and a lot of people will take profits that they've made from the alts and put them back to Bitcoin and they'll jump back and forth. Uh, and look, if you're a good trader, by all means, go ahead and do that. You know, I do some swing trades on occasions, but I don't day trade. I basically invest for, you know, weeks to months, if not sort of years is really, uh, you know, what I do. It's just a, it's easier that way. Just read the cycles, you know, follow the trend. And again, we go back over here. And the trend at the moment is we're going up. We've been going up for a while. And technically, we've probably gone up, been going up since way back here. But 
we hadn't broken out of that line. So it's hard to say we're in a bear market, uh, sorry, in a bull market when we hit the resistance line and fell down. Here is where we have proven that we have finally broken out of that. So I think uh, the trend is now to the upside. Doesn't mean there can't be some significant downs. Uh, Bitcoin is well known for that. And particularly if there's a lot of longs and everything's really positive, as I've said before, quite often Bitcoin can just do the opposite and it'll just take a massive, you know, uh, it'll, go, it'll go backwards. It'll, <laughs> yeah, it'll have a massive retracement. And then when everyone's getting down on it and thinking it's going to keep going down, then it'll just go long. There's definitely uh, a lot of that happening in this space uh, on occasions. But anyway, that's it from me. I hope you're having a great weekend. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're still on those game trains. And I'll see you next time.